Welcome to Sustainability Now, an exploration of technologies and paradigms to shape a world that works. Designed for socially conscious entrepreneurs and individuals interested in responsible stewardship of the planet. Sustainability Now covers food, energy, housing, water, waste, health, economics, and consciousness. Welcome to your community, Sustainability Now, with your host, Mira Rubin. Welcome, everybody, to Sustainability Now, Technologies and Paradigms to Shape a World that Works. I'm your host, Mira Rubin, and I'm delighted to welcome Joy Nemerson. Joy is the Strategic Partnership Manager for the Zero Waste Boxes Program at TerraCycle. And TerraCycle is a global organization that's headquartered in Trenton, New Jersey, that is eliminating the idea of waste by recycling non-recyclables. So Joy, welcome. So we're delighted to have you here. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to tell more people about TerraCycle. Me too, me too. So how about if we start out with that? Give us some background for folks that don't know what TerraCycle is. Of course. So TerraCycle is actually about 15 years old. People often think we're a startup, um, but we've been around for a while. Um, and we started actually as a fertilizer company. Um, our CEO started bottling worm poop in uh, used soda bottles. And then kind of once he figured out that he could get people to send him waste, uh, then TerraCycle got formed into what it is today. Um, so really uh, what we do is we take non-recyclable waste and recycle it. Um, and we work with brands, individuals, uh, companies, big and small, everyone around the block to, to really help them identify what they're sending to landfill and, uh, and how we can keep it out and recycle it. So you're the strategic partnership uh, manager for yes. the zero waste box program. So let's talk about what zero waste boxes are. I'd love to. Okay, um, great. <laughs> so the zero waste box is a box um, that you purchase on our website or uh, through uh, you know, our lovely sales team. Um, and essentially what it is, it is it allows you to you know really identify you know a specific waste stream or a category of waste streams that you have in your home office manufacturing facility what what have you um, and then it has a pre affixed shipping label on the back so that once it is full of gloves or gum or pens or anything else uh, you can you can just pop it to your nearest FedEx and then shoot it back to us and, and we, we deal with it. So it's kind of like the world's most magical trash can. <laughs> That's great. Well, in looking at the TerraCycle site, it was apparent that you have a huge variety of zero yes. boxes. So yeah. what, what makes the different categories? Why do you divide them up into all these different categories? Yeah, so, so the real reason for having so many different boxes is that the more specific you can be with the waste, um, the, the lower the price of the box will be. Um, so if you are just collecting chip bags and snack wrappers, um, then you should get just that box. But we know that you know, people don't always have the manpower or the time to actually separate out you know, all the different waste. So we actually have category boxes. For example, we have a kitchen box that allows you to recycle anything in your kitchen from you know, broken forks to you know, any plastic packaging that comes with food to trash bags and, and anything like that. Um, so you know, we, we really do what we can to make it as easy as possible for, for anyone to, to really go above and beyond for the planet with this kind of kooky program that we have. Well, it's, it's way beyond kooky. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty revolutionary, actually. Um, I think the idea of waste, I just want to talk about that for a second, because one of the things that's abundantly clear to us is that in order for there to be a change on the planet, there really needs to be a change of paradigm. Yeah. And if you're talking about the idea of waste... Uh, 
let's let's dig into that a little bit. Yeah. So you know what we what we say all the time here is that you know waste is a human concept, right? In nature, there there is no such thing as waste. Um, you know, everything is disposed of and decomposed and then reborn in its own time and way. Um, but uh, lucky for us, we develop these products that last forever, um, which can be great if you need a water bottle forever, but it's not so great when you're done with that water bottle and you can't really use it anymore. Um, so what, you know, TerraCycle is trying to do is really meet consumers where they are. You know, currently we have all this plastic waste, you know, it, it's almost unavoidable sometimes. Um, so we are providing the option um, to keep that out of landfill. Obviously, we know that this is a short term solution um, and we are, you know, developing ways that will potentially change the way consumers use products right with durable packaging or you know whatever the the next step for for humanity is um but you know where we are currently is this very disposable world so we try and keep that as low as we can and and really uh, create the raw materials that can be used in the place of virgin materials so that hopefully we won't even have to you know extract more resources and things like that so what actually happens to the contents of these boxes when they come back to TerraCycle? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it really does depend what the waste stream is, um, but let's use the example of a K-cup or a coffee capsule. So really popular item and used in a lot of homes and offices. So when we receive the box, um, it will come to our warehouse in New Jersey. Um, and then once we have a truckload of the material, um, we'll send it to a recycler. The recycler uh, will, you know, empty all the boxes, um, shred the material, and then separate um, the actual coffee. And then, you know, typically they have an aluminum top, like a little, a little top, yeah, aluminum top. Um, and then it will be a plastic bottom. Obviously, different brands have have different compositions. Um, but by separating all those materials, it, it makes it a lot easier for us to turn it into various raw materials. So once we have, you know, the plastic pellet from the actual, you know, K cup or coffee capsule, um, then we can sell that to manufacturers to use, you know, in the place of a virgin material. So you know, a lot of what that becomes is a plastic lumber product that's used in park benches, picnic tables, playgrounds, really, you know, outside durable, durable stuff. So you send the content to the recyclers, the recycler sends the processed product back to you and you sell that? So essentially, um, when we send our material to the recyclers, we're in control of that time and that material. So yeah, it is, it is a little bit of moving around. Um, we don't have our own machinery just because we recycle so many different things. We develop the processes with our in-house R&D team to actually recycle you know, diapers, cigarette butts, gum. Um, but then we actually work with, you know, other recyclers to, to actually process it. Okay, so um, how do you identify these other recyclers? If these are products that aren't typically recycled? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so we have a whole team at TerraCycle that's devoted to, to finding these recycling partners. Um, as you can imagine, and when people meet us, they're like, wait, but how? Um, the how is really important. Um, so we have a lot of people dedicated to, to figuring out who can do it and, and, uh, and then move it to the next step. And so you're a global company. Yes. How many countries are you in now? We're in 22 countries globally, um, which is pretty exciting. People don't realize that. Amazing. But I, I always say probably where you are next, TerraCycle will be there too. Um, and people often ask um, if we ship waste. Um, sometimes they ask if we ship waste to China. Um, yes. And the answer is no. Um, we don't ship waste across any country borders. So if you collect it in France, it will be processed in France. And then within each country, you need to identify the processors, right? Yeah, exactly. There are a lot of moving pieces with TerraCycle, but, um, you know, what I find so compelling about us is that we make it so easy for the consumer. Um, you know, if you buy a zero waste box, all you have to do is purchase it and send it back. Um, and then we kind of figure out the rest. So um, it, it can be a tricky job, um, but, it's, but it's certainly, you know, 
makes a lot of impact because when we have the number of collectors that we do, which is hundreds of thousands across the world, um, you know, doing these little actions, it, it really makes a big difference and keeps a lot of waste out of landfill. And you're also working with a lot of manufacturers too, right? Yeah. So one of uh, the big programs for the Zero Waste Box is actually recycling safety equipment and gloves, um, which if you think about it is a really important waste stream. You know, people have to use gloves, especially in the food industry, if you're working in a factory, um, but they're also highly disposable. So, you know, um, once you're done, you can put it in the Zero Waste Box and we'll take it and uh, Again, keep it out of landfill. <laughs> so Procter & Gamble has a big initiative that you guys are working together with them, right? Yeah. So it's a really exciting program. Um, P&G has partnered with TerraCycle and Suez um, to collect actually ocean plastic um, through you know, organizations across the world. And then we can actually take that plastic and turn it into this shampoo bottle uh, which is beautiful and also recyclable. So it's the first product to be made from ocean plastic that is also recyclable, which was a really important step for them and, and obviously for, for us too. For sure. So how do people find out about these kinds of initiatives and how to get involved in them? Yeah, so if you head over to TerraCycle.com and you look at our free programs, um, the PNG Beach Plastics program will be there. Great. So those, the beach plastics program, is that international? Yeah, it is an international program um, just because we, we need to collect a lot of beach plastic, right? One yeah. for the planet, but, but two to actually create this product. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you would organize a beach cleanup, um, get a actually pallet bag from us, which is like a really big bag, um, collect uh, rigid plastic from beaches and then send it to us. Beautiful. So what other initiatives are are you running at TerraCycle that you'd like to share with other folks? Oof, man, there are so <laughs> many. Um, you know, TerraCycle is always partnering with new brands um, to, you know, create free recycling programs um, for various products. So one of uh, the new really exciting launches that we just had was actually with Hasbro. Um, so you can send back any Hasbro toy to TerraCycle once it's been played with to its uh, life's extent, um, and then we'll recycle it. Um, those plastics are typically pretty intense, you know, pretty, uh, pretty hard plastics um, to deal with in, in a regular um, uh, MRF or uh, municipality. So, you know, it's a, it's a really exciting program for us and for Hasbro, right? You know, educating kids, especially when they're so young on recycling and, and how to treat the planet and, and really just, you know, the extended life of products is I think really important and, and really exciting. So how would people send those toys back to you? Yeah, so for our um, sponsored programs, um, they're all listed on our website. You just have to sign up and then you can download a shipping label. So you just fill up a box and then send it to us. Um, mm -hmm. And what's really awesome about those sponsored programs is that for every pound of waste you send in, you can receive points and those points can actually be redeemed for donations to schools and nonprofits, um, which is, you know, obviously you're doing this amazing thing for the planet, but then you're also, you know, using it either as a fundraising tool for a school or really, you know, donating to, to charities and, and organizations that, that you really align with personally. So it's a, it's a big thing, you know, and it, it's, it's really awesome that we have had so many collectors involved. No joke. That's <laughs> powerful. Yeah. So you're going pretty much top to bottom. Yeah. Which is phenomenal. Uh, so give us, give us the history. Like you said that it started with worm poop in a bottle. But yes. Let's get a little bit more deeply into the history for TerraCycle. Sure. Um, so uh, Tom Zaki, our CEO, um, went to Princeton University, which I think is why we're probably still in New Jersey. Um, and, um, you know, just wanted to, to create the best fertilizer he could. Um, so he really, you know, thought that, you know, packaging was going to be a big cost, right? So using this packaging that was perfectly fine, this um, you know, used soda bottle would be a great idea. So he actually um, 
set up licensing agreements with PepsiCo and Coca-Cola. He says he's the only one in the world that's done this um, to use their soda bottles. So those products were sold, you know, all over the country. Um, and then he realized what, you know, what he really liked about that was that he was using waste. Um, so we then set up a variety of other programs um, with other brands, but um, we used to do a lot more of what we call is upcycling. So upcycling is when you take a product and you're not changing its material composition, but you're turning it into something new. So a great example of this was we partnered with Capri Sun to make backpacks and tote bags out of the juice pouches, which is awesome. Um, and, you know, that program went on for quite a while. Um, but then, you know, once we had developed all these promotional products for these brands, we kind of, you know, took a step back and said, you know, how, how sustainable is this? You know, is, is this really what we, we should be doing? Um, so, so that's kind of when we got into more of the recycling. Um, because, you know, it's great to, to take waste materials and, and turn them into new things. Upcycling is, you know, wonderful and can create beautiful things. Um, but, you know, what we found and, and with, you know, the number of collectors that we have is that recycling actually makes a little bit more sense, right? Um, you know, a tote bag is, you know, at some point disposable. Um, whereas, you know, actually developing a raw material from, you know, that waste is, is, uh, is better and allows, you know, people to actually take, you know, those plastics that were brand new out of their supply chain so that they can use these recovered materials instead. So one of the things that you and I had had a prior conversation. You talked about wishful recycling. Yes. One of my favorite topics. Please. Yeah. So essentially, um, and, and this is my, you know, biggest discovery while working at TerraCycle is no one really teaches you how to recycle. Um, you know, in schools, you talk about recycling and you talk about how important it is, but I think, especially in the US where it's different based on city lines or even in the middle of the city, it can be different on one side than the other. Um, it can be a really confusing process. So sometimes people will put things like K-cups in their recycling bin thinking that they'll be recycled. You know, they even go through the process of emptying them out, cleaning them out, put it in their recycling bin. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that black plastic actually isn't recyclable. So if you're putting, you know, a yogurt lid that's, you know, it has a recycling symbol on it in your recycling bin, it's probably not going to be recycled. Um, just because the optical sorters that they use at these recycling facilities can't see black because they blend in with the belt. So that's wow. one huge thing. Another thing is, you know, number six plastics. So, you know, some... Some cities will take one through six, some will take one through seven, some will just take one, four, and five, you know, it, so it's really important to, to look up where you are and to see what will be accepted. So number six is a pretty common one that a lot of municipalities don't take. So we actually have a program with Solo um, that would allow, you know, anyone to download a shipping label similar to the Hazro program, all of our free programs, um, and then collect and send us back all that number six plastic cup. Wonderful. Do yeah. you guys have a newsletter or some kind of ongoing educational program that can make people aware? Yeah, so we certainly do have a newsletter. Um, you can sign up on TerraCycle.com um, and it will, you know, let you know about, you know, all the new and exciting things that TerraCycle is doing, but also some, some general recycling facts and knowledge. So one of the things that you mentioned is chip bags. And yeah. The thing that distinguishes chip bags is that it's a laminated plastic where part of it is metallic and part of it is plastic, right? Yeah. I, I didn't know before our conversation that they were not recyclable. Yeah. And uh, this brought up, I have, a, um, I have a cat and I give her this food that comes in a plastic container and the top peels off and I have always washed it out and thrown it in the recycle. And I realized that the lid part, the plastic with the metal on it is not recyclable. So I was tainting the recycle by leaving that lid on. And so now every time I tear one off, and put it in the trash, I'm thinking, uh-oh, I need to get a TerraCycle box. <laughs> yeah, please, please. Um, yeah, a lot of people do that. And, you know, it's, it's by no fault of yours, you know, how would you know? 
it, it, that's really what it comes down to is, is just the, the lack of education. Um, and I think, you know, brands that, that we work with are really saying like, Hey, you know, we want to help. Um, and, and they really, you know, take responsibility. Um, a great example of that is uh, we work with L'Oreal um, to recycle all beauty care waste, you know, not just L'Oreal products, but, but any beauty care waste um, across the category. Um, so, you know, if you are putting your shampoo bottle or your lotion bottle in the recycling bin, it might not be getting recycled. So, you know, check that out. And if you can't actually recycle it locally, then, then you should check out the L'Oreal program because, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's important. And, you know, I have a lot of colleagues at different waste uh, management facilities and and they they like to recycle um because we actually help them make their recycling streams cleaner um and and that's uh really what we're trying to do so you said that these materials are getting recycled the plastics into pellet type plastics that then create new products yeah how many times can something be recycled it really depends on the material so uh you know a common fact is that a, an alu aluminum is infinitely recyclable. Glass is infinitely recyclable. Um, you know, when when you start collecting plastics, it, it's it's pretty tough because you know when we recycle them, we combine them. So we you know aren't necessarily creating like a number four plastic from a number four bottle. It might be a number four to a number seven. Um, so. It, it really depends. Um, and, you know, what's what's so fascinating about, you know, the sustainable industry um, is that new innovations are, are coming out all the time. Um, you know, TerraCycle is old news at this point. You know, it, it's cool what we do, but what about this mushroom packaging that you can buy and, and you know, all this other stuff? So, you know, as I'm sure you know, and, and your listeners know, you know, always be on the lookout for new things because, you know, um, we we don't we don't want to you know create waste um and you know when you when you have to use a terracycle box purchase it but um but when you can purchase materials that are you know naked packaging or or uh or any of those other cool packagings that you know actually don't go to landfill then then do that so how about resources that you might recommend to folks books apps Ooh. Yeah, so so one app that I'm really, really currently obsessed with is called Literati. Um, I met uh, the founder at a conference, and basically what it is is it's a database that allows consumers like you and I to go on the street, and whenever we see a piece of trash, take a picture of it and log it. And then what? Throw it know, away. Throw it, pick it up, throw it away. Yeah, right. take, take a picture, pick it up, throw it away. Take picture, pick it up, throw it away. Um, and uh, and what he does is he then uses that data to work with companies. So let's say there's a fast food company, uh, you know, has a shop on the corner. Um, we see their sauce packets all around. Everyone's taking pictures. We say, hey, you know, why don't you ask people if they want sauce because they're throwing it on the ground. Um, and to have that data to to back it up and help, you know, you know, both companies and consumers, you know, make those, you know logical decisions as to do I need this where will it end up um is, is a really really cool one and and it's just you know creating a community around waste so what could be cooler than that and really so much of this is about awareness yeah so it's now since our conversation every time I'm putting something in the trash I'm aware I was like oh boy and you know I got to do something different and I and it's the awareness is encouraging me just to be shifting behaviors. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, my parents have a zero waste box. Thanks, mom and dad. Um, and my, my mom is always so shocked, uh, you know, when they fill it up. Um, because, you know, you're just consuming this plastic and, and these things that you don't even realize sometimes. You know, the newspaper comes in a plastic sleeve. They get two newspapers a day, um, so you know it, it. That alone is is pretty significant, right? So it is, you know, just about taking a step back, evaluating what you're doing, and then you know making the steps that make sense for you. That just brings to mind, actually, the plastic bags that we get at the grocery store that our vegetables come in, or any number of other things are wrapped in plastic. 
I know that a number of supermarkets have a plastic bag recycling. Can we put other kinds of plastic bags in there and still have it be recyclable? Yeah, I would ask. Um, I would ask, you know, I'm sure with, with some you can, with some you probably can't. Um, I think, you know, those grocery stores are working with, you know, local recyclers to collect it because, you know, once there's actually, you know, a significant amount, um, then the recyclers can take it much easier than they can, you know, a single plastic bag or a single plastic film. Um, so I would certainly ask. And then if they, if they don't know, have them ask the recycler because, you know, if you can be, you know, bringing these films to your grocery store, then that's a, a really great option. For sure. And how about in the, uh, the plastic bag, grocery bag, zero waste box that you guys have. Could we put that stuff in there? Um, so we have a box, that's my favorite box, um, called plastic packaging, um, which allows you to put any film, any you know rigid plastic all into one box. Um, so it's a great, great box, great option, and, and we'll just um, kind of inspire you to, to take a look at, at how you're consuming and, and what you can do to, to lower your, your own personal footprint. For sure. Now, the boxes are pretty pricey. Just yes. for, to warn anybody that's going <laughs> to check it out on the website, um, you're looking at what's the least expensive box? Mm, um, so the boxes range uh, from about $50 to about $350. Um, so and they're also different sizes. Yes. So we have three different sizes. Um, and as I mentioned before, you know, knowing your waste is, is really going to bring the cost down because the more things you put in one box, the more expensive it will be because we have to account for the manual separation that we have to do. Um, the boxes are expensive. Um, but, you know, the reason why, you know, they're so expensive is because the materials that we're using are so <laughs> bad. Um, you know, it, these materials are not easy to recycle. And, you know, if we're talking about the recycling industry as a whole, that's the reason why things are deemed non-recyclable because the economics behind it doesn't make sense for a local, you know, municipality to, to take it. Um, you know, something like a chip bag, requires like a very intense amount of, you know, shredding, sorting, you know, there's grease, there's crumbs. Um, it's, it's not easy and, you know, it's not cheap. Um, and I think, you know, we, we're so used to buying, you know, products that are, that are cheap, but we don't really think about the, the full life cycle of that product, right? So if you account for the thousand years that your chip bag will be sitting in a landfill, then maybe it's a little bit more expensive. Um, Another good thing about the zero waste box though is that they hold a lot, um, you know, especially for, for flat and flexible items, um, you can put a lot in that box. Um, so if you have any questions about, you know, how many can fit in each box, which we get a lot, um, you can certainly reach out to our customer service team and they'll help you, you know, figure out what size and which box makes the most sense for you. There's something really beautiful about taking into consideration the waste cycle as part of the food cost, as, yeah. we, as we start becoming more conscious of, of the ramifications of certain purchases and certain food choices and certain product choices, uh, I think it shifts behaviors just because of that awareness. It's profound. Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty crazy when you start to actually think about it and, and actively you know, make your choices. It really is. I mean, I, I, think, I think that so much of what we do, we do because we are unaware. Yeah. And so there's, uh, I think the education piece is huge. And you guys have a bunch of outreach opportunities too, right? Through, well, through these, through your sponsorship programs, it's kind of, it's an outreach of sorts, Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, a great thing about the free recycling programs is that a lot of schools actually do participate because they can use it as a fundraising tool, um, which, you know, allows them to, to really dive into, you know, recycling as a, as a curriculum, right? Um, so, you know, why are certain things recyclable? What's recyclable here? You know, how can we change it? What can we do to, to lower, you know, students impact and especially at the school. Um, so in that regard, certainly um, 
lots lots of uh, materials around that. Um, but uh, you know, where I work a lot is is in offices um, and you know manufacturing facilities as well. But you know, even the act of you know your company getting behind this initiative to say like, hey, you know we realize that we all have an impact, you know, let's work together to, to go above and beyond for the planet. And, you know, the, the morale boost, the employee engagement, like just around that, you know, people don't believe it, but, but it really is, you know, such a valuable tool to, to really get people talking. And, and, you know, if, if my parents can do it, um, you know, and, and really, you know, start to think about it, then, you know, certainly anyone, um, especially in a structured environment, um, can, can do it as well. So you mentioned curriculum in schools. Do you guys have any kind of foundation curriculum or, or educational materials that you make available? Yeah, so uh, through our partnership with PepsiCo, um, we actually have whole lesson plans, whole you know uh, class activities that that you can download and are available for for you. Um, and you know the PepsiCo program, it's called Recycle Rally, um, is available for anyone K through 12, um, and you know it it really allows teachers to, you know, have these easy digestible resources um, to, to teach about recycling, you know, exactly what we're talking about, exactly where I say, you know, the world, world needs more recycling education. Well, you know, we're providing it um, through, through that partnership. So that's a really awesome one. Yeah, that's powerful. And also for folks that are homeschooling to be yeah. able to have that curriculum available. Yeah. So, uh, just to, for our listeners, we're going to have uh, links available for any resources we're talking about on the podcast page for uh, on our website at sustainabilitynow.global. So you'll be able to tap into all these resources that we're discussing in one place and connect over with TerraCycle. So how about you, Joy? Tell us a little bit about your journey to sustainability here sure so um you know what i say is uh uh sustainability is in my blood um and uh and why that is is because my mom is actually um a professor of industrial ecology and environmental management um so you know as a little kid when we would travel for her work you know when she's studying factories and how they could be more efficient and things like that uh, we would always go on factory tours wherever we went um so you know i kind of grew up with this you know it's slightly different than most people think holistic <laughs> mindset, right? So, you know, I see where the products are made and, and then uh, and how they get to your door. Um, so I think growing up with that was, was really impactful. Um, and then personally, um, I, you know, have been studying Chinese for most of my life um, and have spent a significant amount of time in China, um, which is a wonderful place. You know, I, I've been studying it for over 10 years and, and I miss it every day. Um, but, you know, being there, you can you can truly feel, you know, the human impact on the environment um, and, you know, breathing it in every day. It's, it's hard to, to not think about it. Um, and I think that that also really, you know, set me on my journey for, for, you know, what I currently do now at, at TerraCycle, which is, you know, why, why are we doing this and, and how can we, you know, make it easier to stop? Um, and, um, I, yeah, it, it's, it's been a pretty, pretty awesome time at TerraCycle. I've been here for two years. Um, and I, I get to work specifically with events, um, helping them go zero waste. So, you know, I, uh, help sort trash in the back of, you know, uh, arenas and convention centers and, and really see what people are throwing away, which is another really fascinating thing. Um, and then uh, get to, to help them tell their sustainability story. You know, it's, it's a pretty awesome thing to say you diverted 99% waste diversion, um, which is what we did at the Green Biz Conference this past year. And then we just went to sustainable brands in Vancouver. So hopefully they'll have equally high numbers. Um, uh, and then I also, you know, really get to work on the product, which is the zero waste box um, and, you know, helping people understand really the magic of, of what it is and, and how they can best use it in their homes and communities. So that's me. That's wonderful. It's a perfect fit. It sounds like you found your, your home yeah. in the right place. So is there anything that you'd like to leave us with today, uh, pointers on what we can do to be better planetary citizens, um, 
what yeah. advice? So, you know, it's, it's a lot of what we've been talking about and, and what we talked about in our first conversation. It's all about awareness and education. Um, and I think a lot of things in life kind of boil down to awareness and education and recycling is no different. Um, you know, just making yourself really in tune with, you know, what your community is doing for recycling. And then if you can help them increase that in any way, you know, do that. Um, but it's, but it is really important to, to get a grip of, what's actually happening and then how you can adjust your habits to, to fit, fit what's, what's going on. Beautiful. Well, Joy, I just want to say thank you so much for being with us today. Thank uh, you so much for having me. It, it really means a lot. And, and if anyone needs anything or has any questions on TerraCycle, just, uh, you know, I actually, it just, before we say goodbye, it occurred yeah. to me, there may be folks listening who are manufacturers or who want to be involved in some capacity in recycling and with TerraCycle. They just contact TerraCycle or yeah. how would that work? Yeah, I can give you uh, a link that you can put in the, in the podcast um, notes in the podcast notes oh um, now i'm gonna put you on the spot because when okay. we talked earlier you said that for listeners uh you would be able to offer a yes. special discount on the boxes yes absolutely so if you use the discount code sustainability now you'll get 15 percent off your whole purchase oh that's beautiful and is yes. there any time limitation on that or are we good uh i think it will expire at the end of the year so you have a whole year or half a year to uh, to use that code and and please do you know what what I keep saying and and what we keep saying is you know once you you know kind of start to monitor your habits and and really you know take a step back look what you're putting in your box then you can can stop buying the box because you won't need it anymore um, <laughs> uh, but uh, until then yeah uh, fifteen percent off uh, with this sustainability now code thank you so much <laughs> and of course. <laughs> this is great. I, I hope that everyone enjoyed it. Thank you to our listeners. You're the ones that are taking action in the world to make a change. And thank you to our uh, producer, Scott Billy. And that's it for today. I'm your host, Mira Rubin. Until next time, live your best life, love the world around you, and together we can save the world. Thank you for listening to Sustainability Now, solutions to shape a world that works. Visit sustainabilitynow.global for resources related to today's program. And be sure to subscribe, share, and follow us on social media.